right, it looks like we're at four o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started this evening. I hope you guys are doing well today, having a beautiful sunny day. I know most of you are already settled into your mat, so if you're already in the spot you want to be in, go ahead and stay right where you are. If there's another spot that you like to start your practice in, you can start to transition into that spot now. So intentionally starting to tune in to how you're feeling physically. So kind of noticing how are my shoulders doing? How are my legs doing? How are my arms doing? How am I feeling? And maybe you make some adjustments. Maybe you move the placement of your hands. Maybe they're on your stomach. Maybe they're at the sides of your body. Maybe you try bending your knees, kind of letting your knees rest together with the feet on the mat. Maybe you lie flat. Take a moment to find that comfortable space for your body. And then allow the mind to also settle into a comfortable space. So you can do that by pressing pause on whatever it was you were doing. For the next hour, you get to kind of just be in this little space of pause where everything else can wait till later, not have to worry about anything, not have to think about anything except just allowing yourself to be here on your mat, stretching and breathing and doing something that's so good for you. So go ahead and press that pause button. And when you do, start to deepen your breath. Start to bring your awareness to the breath, first of all, because we're breathing all the time, but we're not always paying attention to it. So starting to take really full inhales through the nose, drawing that breath down through the chest, the lungs, kind of picture that breath coming into the body, eventually filling up the stomach so that your stomach is getting bigger as you inhale, kind of like you're blowing up a balloon. And then as you exhale, gently reverse that direction, pressing that air back out. Go ahead and take a couple more breaths like that, really slow, intentional breaths where you're focusing on it. You're following that breath. You're feeling that kind of slowing down sensation as you do it. Sometimes we don't realize how fast we're moving until we start to slow down our breath, start to slow down our movements, and then we realize how unslow we were a moment ago. So go ahead and enjoy that slowing down feeling. Take this time to set an intention for your practice. Some people like to use the same intention every single week. Maybe you're always focusing on your breath. You're always focusing on balance or forgiving someone or letting something go. Maybe you like to mix it up based on how you're feeling today. So whatever feels right to you, let that be your intention this evening. Then we'll take one more breath before we start to move a little bit. And then when you are ready, you can start to make your way into a full body stretch. So if you are not flat on your mat already, go ahead and lie back, straighten the legs, the arms start to reach overhead. As you take a big breath in, get a little longer. And let's all stretch to the left side a little bit. So you're kind of leaning to the left side a little bit. Maybe you even walk your feet to the left side. The idea is that you're getting a stretch all along the right side of the body. So as you lean to the left, almost like you're making a little crescent moon shape. You're stretching those right fingertips all the way to the left side. And then gently coming back through center and we'll take it over to the other side. So let's stretch to the right, getting a nice big stretch through the left side of the body. So the feet come to the right, the arms come to the right. And you feel yourself get a little longer on the left. And then again, on the next inhale, go ahead and come back through center. We're going to start to draw the knees in towards us, wrapping your arms around your knees. Give yourself a little hug. So you can kind of rock side to side. You can rock back and forth. You can make circles with the knees, whatever feels comfortable here. Starting to feel that spine pressing down into the mat, creating that connection. And then the left foot is going to come down onto the mat. So the left knee is bent, the left foot comes down, the right leg starts to extend up towards the sky. And then we're just going to raise and lower that right leg. So moving with the breath, like always, as you inhale the breath, the leg lifts up. As you exhale, it presses back down. I like to point my toe when I lift and then flex my foot when I bring it back down just to start to 
kind of engage the leg and the foot a little bit. And the next time the leg lifts, go ahead and start to draw the leg in towards the body using the hand. So you can kind of massage the back of the leg, bend but straight in the knee a little bit, roll out the ankle. Just using that hand to bring the leg closer to you, even lifting your head up off the mat if that feels good. So that the nose is kind of coming towards the knee. And then slowly placing your head back down on the mat, the right foot comes to the left knee. Your arms are going to come into a T at either side of you. And then just let the hips start to rock from side to side. So the right knee comes towards the mat. And then the right foot comes towards the mat. And then slowly as you come back through center, you can go ahead and place that right foot on the mat, extend the left foot up towards the ceiling. And then same thing as we did on the other side, starting to raise and lower that left foot as you inhale, the leg lifts up. As you exhale, it presses back down taking a couple rounds with your breath. So it could really be fast, it could be slow. It could mean not moving at all if it feels better to just keep that leg lifted without the movement. And then the next time you lift the leg, the arms come behind that leg, starting to draw the leg towards you. Massaging the back of the leg, moving the knee, the ankle, lifting up through the head as you draw your nose towards your knee. And then slowly lowering the head back down to the mat, the left knee comes to, or the left foot comes to the right knee, your arms come out to either side. And then again, the hips can just gently rock from side to side, twisting through the spine. So think about creating a little bit of a twist or a little bit of a movement in the back of the body. And then as you come back through center, let's draw the knees in one more time, bring your hands behind your thighs, as you slowly rock your way all the way up to a seated position, sitting up nice and tall, crossing the legs, bring your hands to your knees, kind of rock it out a little bit as you settle in through the sits bones. Take a deep breath in as the spine gets a little longer, as the shoulders relax. And then we're just going to take a breath in, lift the shoulders up towards the ears, exhale, let them roll down the back. We'll do that two more times. Inhale, draw the shoulders up. Exhale, release them back. And doing that one more time with your breath, really trying to break up some of that tightness, that tension that's in the shoulders. Let's take it in the other way. So lifting them up the back and then exhale, release them forward. So think about any sort of tension or anything you're holding on to in the upper back and neck and shoulders as you move the shoulders you start to dissolve that a little bit. So let's take one more breath in, draw the shoulders all the way up towards the ears, hold on to it for a moment. And then with a giant exhale, let it go. And then we're just gonna slowly release the chin forward, taking the gaze to the mat in front of you. And then go ahead and take your gaze up towards the ceiling, releasing the head back. You can open and close your mouth a little bit if that feels good to get an even deeper stretch on your throat. And then one more time, take the gaze forward. So your spine is still long. You're sitting up really tall. The bend is coming just in the neck. And then take the gaze up towards the ceiling, releasing the head back as much as it feels comfortable. And then slowly allowing the head to circle all the way around, beginning to make full circles. If that feels comfortable, full circles is not for you today, then side to side is an option, or even just bringing your hands to the neck and sort of massaging it a little bit, getting into any areas that feel tight or tender. Going back in the other direction if you are circling. And then once you feel even on both sides, you can start to make your way back through center finding your way into a butterfly position with the soles of the feet together, the hands under the toes, lengthen through the spine as you inhale and then as you exhale, folding forward, starting to draw the chest towards the toes, pressing the knees towards the shins, or the elbows towards the shins, I should say. Your knees are already by your shins.
and then slowly lifting back up. We're gonna extend our legs long, so coming into a, a wide V shape. I'm gonna rock it out again, flex through the feet so your legs are really engaged here, almost like you're trying to point your toes towards your body. Interlace your hands, and then we're gonna start to circle the upper body, so making giant circles. Getting that spine to start to warm up a little bit, getting that spine to start to move a little bit. And back in the other direction. And then coming back through center, take a deep breath in as the arms reach overhead. As you exhale, you're going to start to fold forward, starting to walk the hands away from the body. Take a breath as you lengthen through the back of the body. As you inhale, see if you can fold just a little bit further, still flexing through those feet. And maybe one more time, inhale, lengthen through the back of the body. Exhale, see if you can fold just a little bit further forward. On the next inhale, slowly starting to lift the upper body back up. We're going to take our hands to the outside of our legs and just kind of press the legs back together so you're in a staff position with your legs extended in front of you. We're going to take the right foot, take it to the outside of the left knee. So you're crossing the right foot over the left side. The right hand comes to the side of the body. And then as you inhale, the left arm lifts up. We're twisting to the right. So that left elbow hooks on the outside of the right knee as you start to look over your right shoulder. Take a breath in, sit up a little taller. Exhale as you twist a little further. And then slowly coming back through center, take it over to the left, so in the opposite direction. Unraveling through that spine a little bit. And then again, go ahead and come back through center, extend the legs long, kind of tap the backs of the legs on the mat a little bit. And we'll take it over to the other side. So the left foot's going to cross over the right leg. Oops, sorry about that. My cat's going crazy. Left hand comes to the side of the body. As you inhale, the right fingertips lift up. As you exhale, you're twisting to the left. So hook the right elbow on the outside of the left knee. Take a deep breath in as you sit up. Think about twisting through the whole spine. So starting from the base of the spine all the way up to the neck. And then going back in the opposite direction, unraveling that twist, left elbow to the left knee. And again, come back through center. And then just kind of shake it out as you start to make your way into a tabletop position. So go ahead and come onto your hands and knees, wrists below the ankles, knees below the hips. And just find a flat back first. And then you're going to start to move through that cat and cow. So the inhale releases the stomach down, the gaze comes up. As you exhale, press the ground away. And go ahead and take a couple more breaths like that, moving as much as you need. I always like to move my head a little bit, my hips a little bit. It doesn't need to just be that up and down motion. It can be circular. Sometimes rocking the hips from side to side can feel good on the outside of the hip if it's a little tight. And then once you finish the round that you're on, we're all going to make our way into a child's pose for a couple of breaths. So your toes are coming together, your knees are slightly apart. As you bring your hips to your heels, start to settle into your child's pose. Finding a space that feels comfortable with your hands, maybe that's at the top of your mat. Maybe that means stacking the hands with the forehead on the back of the hands. Or maybe your fingertips come next to your toes. That can take some of the pressure off your shoulders. So see what feels comfortable. And take about three or four breaths here. Coming back to that intention that you set, coming back to the present moment. Sometimes when we're in our houses, there's other things going on. There's people, there's pets, there's noises. You can get distracted. So take this moment now to bring yourself back if you started to go somewhere else. One of the best ways you can do that is to just follow your breath. And then we're going to slowly start to make our way back into, well, not back, but into our first downward facing dog. So you're going to walk your hands to the top of the mat if they weren't there already. 
tucking your toes, straightening your legs as you settle into that first downward dog of your practice. Maybe that means moving the feet a little bit, bending the knees, rocking the hips from side to side, taking all those little movements that help you start to settle in here. On the next inhale, we're gonna roll it forward into a plank position. So drawing the shoulders over the wrist, tuck the tailbone under. As you exhale, send it back. We're gonna do that two more times. Inhale, draw it forward, find that plank position. Exhale, send it back. And one last time, inhale like a wave, roll it forward into a plank. Exhale, back to your downward facing dog. Good, taking your gaze towards your hands, go ahead and walk the feet to the top of the mat, finding your forward fold. So the feet are about hips with distance apart. Your hands can be wherever it feels comfortable, holding onto elbows, holding onto the back of your head, holding onto the backs of your legs, whatever feels good. Just let that upper body start to become heavy, start to hang a little bit, like gravity, do the work. And put a bend in your knees. Usually that helps you come a little deeper. I know for me, when my legs are tight and straight, you kind of get a little stiff up top. You put a little bend in the knees and all of a sudden you can lean forward a little bit more. So slowly, we're gonna to start to roll all the way back up to standing, one vertebrae at a time. Make your way all the way up, reach your arms overhead, a little back bend if that feels good. And then as you exhale, bring your hands to heart center. We're gonna move through a couple slow sun salutations. So on the next inhale, the arms are gonna lift back up overhead. As you exhale, big swan dive down, forward folds. On an inhale, we're just gonna take a breath for space. As you exhale, the left foot is gonna step back, so kind of like a little lunge. And then your right foot steps back to your downward facing dog. On the next breath, roll it back out into that plank position. This time we're gonna bring our knees to the mat and go ahead and lower yourself all the way down, a little reverse push up. On the next inhale, start to press it up upward facing dog. So you can decide if you like that low cobra, you can stay down right here with the hands lifted. If you'd like to press the hands into the mat and come a little higher, then go ahead and do that. And from here, we're all gonna make our way back to our downward facing dog so your knees can bend, your toes can tuck, find your downward facing dog. Take your gaze to the top of the mat, and then that left foot steps forward, back to that low lunge the right foot steps forward. Bring your hands to your shins as you take a breath in, lift up halfway. Exhale as you fold. The next inhale brings it all the way up, reach the arms overhead. Exhale, hands come to heart center. So that was one full rotation of a sun salutation. We're gonna do one more. So another inhale brings the arms up overhead. As you exhale, fold it forward. Inhale just to prepare. This time, let's step back with the right foot first. And then as you exhale, step back to your down dog with the left foot. On the next breath, we'll roll it forward into a plank position, drawing the shoulders over the wrists. Your knees can come down to the mat. Lower yourself all the way down onto your stomach. And then as you inhale, start to press it up. Again, you decide how high you come here. Maybe you come a little higher than you did before. Maybe you come right back where you were before because that felt good. And then as you exhale, find your downward facing dog, the toes tuck, the hips lift, the legs lengthen. Back to that downward facing dog, we'll take a breath here. And then go ahead and take your gaze to the top of the mat. We'll step the right foot up first. And then the left foot. Take a breath for space. Hands come to the shins as you flatten the back. As you exhale, fold. And then on the next inhale, lift it all the way up. Reach the arms overhead. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Good. On the next inhale, the arms are gonna reach back up overhead. 
Interlace your hands, this time press the palms away from you so the palms are pressing up towards the ceiling. You can bring your feet together so your toes are touching if they're not already. And let's take a side stretch over to the left side so that we're lengthening through the whole right side of the body. Looking under that right arm towards the ceiling. And then on the next inhale, lift it up, get nice and long and take it over to the other side, lengthening through the left side. Try to roll that left shoulder open a little more as you look under that left arm. And then again, the inhale brings us back through center, coming to the top of your mat if you weren't already. Big swan dive down as we exhale. The hands fold forward, the upper body folds forward. And let's take that little halfway lift again. So bringing your hands to your shins, lengthen through the spine as you inhale. As you exhale, fold. We're gonna step the left foot back again. So coming back to that low lunge. This time the left hand is gonna stay down on the mat. The right hand is gonna lift up towards the ceiling. So take your gaze towards the right fingertips. Roll the right shoulder open and back. And then slowly bringing the right hand back down to the mat. We're gonna lift up to a high lunge from here. So, so bringing your hands to your knees if you need to, and then starting to lift the upper body up until you're in that high lunge. So that's a challenging transition to come from the ground all the way up. So if that doesn't feel comfortable, you can always kind of straighten the leg and then lower that right knee into the lunge. So from here, we're gonna find our warrior one. And the only difference between the high lunge and the warrior one is that that back heel grounds down. So you're on the toes right now of that left foot. Now you're gonna come with that left heel down on the mat. Take a breath in. As you exhale, bend into that right knee a little bit more. Press that left hip forward so that the hips are squared off. And then we're gonna take the hands, bring them behind the body. You're interlacing your hands behind your tailbone. Take a breath in as you puff up the chest, kind of looking up towards the ceiling, opening up the heart, press the shoulders behind you. And then you're gonna lean forward as much as it feels comfortable. So kind of just Pressing the chest down, reaching the top of the head towards your mat, or the top of your mat, I should say. And then we're gonna come right back into that little lunge from here. So your hands can start to frame out that right foot. Again, if it's hard to get here, maybe you bring the knee down first, maybe you adjust that back leg, and then you find that little lunge. From here, that left foot is gonna step back up to meet the right. Take that little halfway lift for space, lengthen through the spine. Exhale as you fold. On the next inhale, lift it all the way back up, reach the arms overhead. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Inhale, reaches the arms up. Swan dive it forward on the exhale. Inhale, take that halfway lift. As you exhale, we'll step the right foot back, finding a low lunge on the left side this time. So the right hand stays down, left arm starts to lift up towards the sky. Take your gaze towards the left fingertips, rolling open through that left shoulder. And then starting to bring the left hand back down to the mat. So again, we're coming to that high lunge from here. So getting there, however it feels comfortable, Bringing the hands to the front knee first can help a little bit, or just straightening the legs and then bending into it can help. The arms are gonna reach overhead, the shoulders are gonna relax. Doesn't matter how you get there. If you find a way that works better for you, that's fine. And then from here, we're going to find that warrior one. So the back heel is gonna ground down. The right hip is gonna press forward. Shoulders are relaxed, and then you're looking up towards your hands. Take a deep breath in, see if as you exhale, you can bend into that left knee just a little bit more. And then we're gonna take the hands behind the back again. This time when you interlace the hands, see if you can put the awkward thumb on top. So usually it's your non-dominant hand. Take a breath in and puff up through the chest. Exhale, lean it forward. And 
And then again, we're coming back to that low lunge. So slowly the hands are gonna come back down to frame out that left foot. You can spin to the ball of the right foot as you prepare to come back to your forward fold. So when you're ready, that right foot steps up to meet the left. Find that little halfway lift for space as you inhale with the hands on the shins. Exhale, folding into that. And inhale, lifting it all the way up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Good, that was a tricky one. So give yourself a little pat on the back. <laughs> on the next inhale, let's reach our arms up overhead. As we exhale, sit back into your imaginary chair for chair pose. So the weight is in your heels. The shoulders are pressing away from the ears. We're gonna bring our hands to heart center. And then we're gonna start to twist to the right. And you're gonna think about bringing the left elbow towards your right knee. It doesn't have to touch, but that's kind of where you're working in that direction. You're trying to kind of hook the left elbow on the outside of the right knee. Again, it doesn't have to be there, but that's where it's going. See if you can turn your gaze so that you're looking towards the right elbow. Good. And then on the next inhale, we're gonna unravel that, straighten the legs, reach the arms up overhead. And as you exhale, you're gonna sit right back into that chair one more time. So the weight is in the heels. The toes are really light. You can even wiggle your toes a little bit. Bring your hands to heart center. And then this time the twist is gonna to go to the left. So start to twist the upper body to the left. Think about bringing that right elbow to the outside of the left knee this time, or towards that left knee as you look at that left shoulder. And then on the next inhale, go ahead and unravel it all as you reach the arms up overhead. And exhale, you can bring your hands to the sides of your body. Good. We're gonna come into our tree pose. So you wanna find a nice firm foundation with that left foot. Sometimes that means stepping off of your mat. If your mat is super squishy, it can be a little harder for balancing. So find a nice firm stance with the left foot. Your hands are coming to heart center. And then we're gonna to start to bring the right foot to the inner ankle. So the right toes can even stay on the mat. You're balancing here because you're mostly on that left foot. If this feels good and you want to bring the right foot up a little higher, you can bring it to your inner shin, or maybe use your hand to bring it to your inner thigh. You can also have a wall on the left side of you so that you can press your hand into the wall if you need it or whenever you want it or even just having a chair by you or something. I just grabbed this little ledge. So having something by you can sometimes give you that confidence to hold the pose a little longer than you would have otherwise. And then taking any movement with your arms that you like. So if you like to reach your arms overhead, if you like to open them up or even bring that prayer overhead, you can do any variation of your tree. That's what's fun about tree. You kind of get to play around with it a little bit. So taking about two more breaths in your tree. And then the trick is to come out of it as slowly and with control as you came into it. So slowly starting to bring your hands back to heart center and then gently placing that right foot back down on the mat. You can kind of shake out your standing leg and just kind of shake it all out. Sometimes it feels good just to like wiggle and move everything a little bit, have some fun with it. That's why we're doing this. So then we're gonna switch over to the other side. The right foot is going to Find that nice firm foundation. The left foot comes into the right inner ankle as your hands come to heart center. And again, choosing your variation with your foot first. So that left foot can start to come up the leg a little bit. And then finding wherever you want your hands and that can stay right here at heart center. That can mean opening them up a little bit. That can be lifting them up could be moving them if that's fun, or if that helps you. About two more breaths, just like this. If you fall, you just come right back into it. And then slowly starting to draw the hands back to heart center, sliding that left foot back down to the mat. And again, shake it all out. Shake out the arms, shake out the legs, wiggle a little bit and let it go. And then we're gonna to start to come into our Tadasana, our mountain pose. So closing your eyes, starting with the feet, let your feet be about hips width distance apart, find a nice 
firm foundation with your feet, maybe rocking forwards and backwards a little bit on your feet, or sometimes I like to pick up my toes and then one at a time, put them back on the mat. And then feel the legs strong. The knees aren't locked, so you're, you're strong and supported, but you're not stiff and tight, you're loose. That tailbone is gently tucking under, the spine gets a little longer as you make that adjustment. Let's take a breath in and draw the shoulders up towards the ears. And then as you exhale, let them roll down the back. Your arms are resting softly at the sides of your body. The chin is parallel to the ground. So we're now leaning forward. We're lifting our heads. We're lifting the top of the head towards the sky. And then let's all take a really nice deep breath in, just like we did at the beginning of class, creating that little balloon belly or Buddha belly as we inhale. And then as you exhale, let it go. One more time, just like that. Really good, full breath in. And exhaling it all out. And then slowly you can start to open your eyes, making your way back to the top of your mat if you weren't there already. Coming to stand at the top of your mat, we're gonna make our way into a warrior two by just stepping the left foot just about to the back of your mat. So you can decide how far back it goes. But that left foot is gonna be parallel to the back of your mat. The right toes are facing forward. Take a breath in as you lift your arms up. Your hips are facing the left side of your mat. And then as you exhale, bend into that left knee. I'm sorry, right knee. <laughs> I'm looking at myself on the screen and saying what I've seen. So we're looking at the right fingertips over that right hand, bending through the right knee. The shoulders are relaxed. We're gonna find a peaceful warrior from here. So the right palm is gonna lift up towards the sky. You're gonna reach your right fingertips forward and then lift that right arm up and overhead. Left hand can softly rest on the back of the leg. We don't wanna really be pressing and hurting the knee. So just kind of letting it gently land on the back leg. Getting a nice stretch on the right side of the body as you continue to bend into that right knee. From here, we're gonna transition into our extended side angle. So that right elbow is gonna to start to come towards the right knee. The left arm is gonna to reach towards the top of the mat. So think about creating a really long straight line on the left side of the body, bringing that left shoulder towards your ear, rolling that left shoulder open. This is a tricky one, so breathe through it. Don't hold the breath. Sometimes we like to hold our breath in the tricky ones. On the next inhale, transition back to your warrior two. You've been bending that knee for a while, so you might feel it burning a little bit at this point. Let's go ahead and straighten that right knee. That should feel good. Reach the right fingertips forward, and then make your way into your trikonasana, triangle pose, by bringing the right arm down, lifting the left fingertips up taking your gaze towards that left hand as you roll the left shoulder open. And again, just taking a breath here. On the next inhale, we're gonna engage the core, slowly lift up through the upper body, turn the right toes to face the side of your mat. Take a breath in as you reach the arms up overhead. As you exhale, dive it down, wide-legged forward fold. So I always like to leave this up to you guys to do whatever feels good for you. So that could be staying still. Maybe you don't move at all. Maybe you sort of hold on to opposite elbows and just hang forward. Maybe you walk your hands to one side, walk your hands to the other side, bend the knees a little bit. Let's go ahead and take about two or three more breaths here, folding in whatever way feels good for those legs. And then we're gonna slowly start to walk the hands back towards the body. You can bring your hands to your, or your thighs as you gently press yourself all the way back up. And then we're gonna kind of just step the feet together, shake it all out as you make your way back to the top of the mat. And we're gonna step the right foot back for our warrior two on the other side. So the right foot is stepping so that it's parallel to the back of your mat. That left foot is staying forward. Take a breath in as you lift the arms up 
Exhale as you bend into that left knee, maybe adjusting a little bit if you need to kind of wiggle the back foot back a little further or inch the front foot up. Because you want to make sure that that left knee is not over the left ankle, or it's directly over it, not in front of it. So that left palm is going to lift, the left fingertips reach forward as we come into our peaceful warrior. The left arm lifts up and overhead, bending into that left knee as you relax the shoulder. Take the gaze up towards the ceiling. And then from here, extended side angle. The left elbow is coming to the left knee or towards the left knee. The right hand reaches towards the front of the mat. Stretching through the whole right side of the body as you look up towards the sky. Take a nice breath here rather than holding the breath. And then on the next inhale, back to your warrior two. See if you can come into it a little deeper than you were before. And then go ahead and straighten that left leg. Feel that nice little relief in the leg as we start to make our way into Trikonasana, triangle pose. Left fingertips reach forward and then down. So we do that little forward lean first to give ourselves some more space. Kind of get that space and then you're able to fold a little further than you were otherwise. Left hand can be resting on your shin, on the block on the mat. Think about trying to create one straight line from the left hand to the right hand. So the right fingertips are directly up towards the ceiling there. Sometimes we have them forwards or backwards, but see if you can press that right hand right up. And then on the next inhale, engage the core as you start to lift the upper body up, turn the left toes to face the same direction as the right as you reach the arms up overhead. One more time, big wide legged forward fold as you exhale, take it down. Maybe taking a different variation. Sometimes I like to walk my hands really far in front of me, finding a downward dog kind of variation with your legs wide, or maybe walk your hands really far behind you, trying to bring the top of your head down towards the mat. And then again, starting to walk your hands directly under your body. If they weren't there already, you can bring them to your thighs and then just gently press yourself up and heel toe your feet back together. Find a standing position at the top of your mat. And then inhale as you lift the arms up. As you exhale, fold it forward. We're gonna take that halfway lift into prepare. So hands come to shins, little flat back as you inhale. As you exhale, step that left foot back. So we're coming back to that low lunge. And then we're just going to immediately lower down that left knee as we start to come into our crescent lunge or Anjaneyasana. So you're going to straighten that right leg as you press the hips back and fold over the right leg. And then as you inhale, press the hips forward. Go ahead and do that just two or three more times just to kind of warm up through the hips a little bit. And then we're gonna make our way into that crescent lunge. So the next time you come forward, start to bring the hands either to the knee or reach them all the way up towards the sky. Relax the shoulders, take your gaze towards the hands. So feeling that opening in the chest, in the heart. I always like to smile in this one, it just makes me feel happy. And then go ahead and bring your hands back to frame out that right foot. We're gonna tuck the left toes, straighten that back leg so you're back in your low lunge, and we're gonna find our way back to a forward fold. So it can be one giant step, it can also be a couple smaller steps. I never really say that, but it doesn't have to be one big step if that's a little bit much to take one giant step. So let's take that halfway lift, lengthen through the spine. Exhale as you fold. Inhale, lifts it all the way back up, reach the arms overhead. Hands come to heart center. And on the next inhale, the arms lift back up overhead. As you exhale, dive it down, forward fold. And we'll step the right foot back. Again, a couple steps is fine. It doesn't have to be one giant step. However, that back foot gets to the back of the mat is perfect. The right knee comes down, those toes untuck. And as you exhale, straighten the left leg and fold. We'll take a couple movements forwards and backwards here. 
just warming up that hip. I always like to do this before we come into that pose because it helps you come a little further. If you just come into it cold, it can be a little tight on the hips, but if you take the time to kind of warm up the hips a little more, you can usually come a little further. So the next time we come forward, go ahead and start to settle into that crescent lunge by bringing the hands either to the knees or up towards the sky as you relax your shoulders, take the gaze up towards your hands. And then slowly bringing your hands to frame out that left foot. We're going to tuck the right toes, straighten the right leg. And then again, right foot steps back up to meet the left. Halfway lift for space as you inhale. Exhale as you fold. Inhale, lifts it all the way back up. And exhale, hands come to heart center. Good. Let's take our hands right back overhead on an inhale. Swan dive down on an exhale. This time we're going to step it back to our downward facing dog. So go ahead and walk the feet to the back of the mat. And just take a breath here. Maybe the gaze comes towards the thighs or the shins. Maybe you continue to move a little bit if it still feels good. And then we're gonna lower down onto our knees, coming back into that tabletop position. So bringing your knees to the mat, finding that nice flat back. And then let's stretch out the foot a little bit, extending that right foot, keep the toes tucked as you start to press yourself forward and backwards, stretching through the bottom of that right foot. And then as you come back through center, the right leg is going to lift, point the right toes towards the back of the room. If this feels like enough of a balance, you're going to stay right here. If you want to add on, left fingertips reach towards the front of the room. So opposite arm, opposite leg are reaching in opposite directions. Final option, if you want to add on some more, that right knee is going to bend. So the toes are either pointing up towards the ceiling or maybe towards your head. And then that left arm is gonna to start to reach back for the right foot. Doesn't have to touch, you don't, it, that's okay. You can just be reaching for it and you're still getting that nice back bend. If you do have the foot in your hand, grab the top of the foot and work on pressing the foot away from the body. But if you're still reaching for the foot, just work on lifting up through the heart, pressing that left hand back and the foot towards you all while maintaining your balance. It's not easy, so be gentle with yourself. And then slowly go ahead and re-extend your arm and leg. Bring both back down to the mat. You can kind of rock your hips out from side to side a little bit, and we'll take it over to the other side. So the left leg is gonna extend, start to press yourself forwards and backwards, using the heel to kind of press you back, and then the toes to press you forward, getting that little stretch in the bottom of the foot. And then on the next breath, that left leg is going to lift. And again, you choose. If this is enough and you want to leave the hand off, that's fine. If you're ready to add on, right fingertips reach towards the front of the room. So left leg, right hand. Maybe this is where you're staying. If you're taking it one step further, that left knee is going to bend. And you're going to start to reach back for the leg. Again, don't have to have it. That's fine. The idea is that we're getting a little bend in the spine and you're bending even when you're reaching. So that is plenty. And then slowly go ahead and bring your hands and knees back to the mat. You can kind of shake it out, rock the hips from side to side a little bit. And then we're just going to come to a seated position right here on your mat. So go ahead and turn over so that you have the legs extended long in front of you. And we're going to do our pigeon pose from a seated position today. I know we've done that before. So the right foot is going to come on top of the left knee. So you're making like an upside down figure four shape, flexing through that left foot, flexing through the right foot. So both feet are flexed and engaged. Your hands are the sides of your body. You might feel this in your hip already. Mine are a little tighter today, so I can already feel it just like this. If this feels good in that right hip and you want to stay here, stay right there. 
If you're not yet feeling it, that left knee is gonna bend, the left foot is gonna come onto the mat, and then you're just gonna keep walking the left foot towards the body or the body towards the foot until eventually you can feel it in that hip, and then that's where you're going to settle. So once you find the spot that, where you can feel it, you wanna feel that little opening feeling or like, like that tightness is kind of dissolving. You wanna feel that feeling, but you don't wanna go beyond it to the point where it hurts. So kind of finding that happy middle. And then once you have that, your eyes can close. Keep trying to lengthen through the spine to so use your arms to help you kind of sit up a little taller. Sometimes I like to rock my hips a little bit from side to side. If that feels good, you can do that. And then slowly that left leg is gonna slide back down onto the mat. If you had it bent, the right leg is gonna extend long, tap the backs of the legs on the mat or kind of windshield wiper your feet from side to side. And then we'll take it over to the other side. So the left foot is gonna come to the top of the right knee. And check in with where you are here. Maybe this is completely different. Maybe you feel a little more open on this side and you're able to come a little deeper. So if you're staying right here, go ahead and start to settle in, closing your eyes. If you're bending that right knee, start to walk the right foot towards the body until you find that spot that feels like the right amount of stretching. And then again, about five breaths here. And then slowly that right leg is gonna to start to slide back down onto the mat. The left leg can extend as well. Tap the backs of the legs on the mat. And then we're gonna to start to take it all the way down. So you know the drill by now, slide so that your feet are at the top of the mat. And then one vertebrae at a time, you'll start to lower yourself all the way down, reaching the arms overhead, finding a nice big full body stretch once you get there. So take a deep breath in. Exhale as you let it go. And then we did a little back bending in um, that last pose we were in, but let's do our bridge pose anyway. So go ahead and bend your knees, bring your feet to the base of your spine. And then on the next inhale, let's start to press the hips up towards the sky. Your hands can press into the mat. Your shoulders can kind of roll under you a little bit. Hands can continue to press down or they can interlace under the tailbone. Think about almost like you're tucking your chin into your chest because you're just pressing that upper body up. And then slowly one vertebrae at a time, start to peel the spine back down onto the mat. Once your tailbone touches, your knees can rock from side to side, like little mini windshield wipers. And then let's start to find our inversion. So your feet can start to reach right up towards the ceiling if that's where you're going tonight. If you like to do this against a wall, go ahead and move yourself to a wall so that you can have that wall to support the legs you're getting the same benefit of the inversion, but it's a little more restorative. If you're doing it in the middle of the room, you can bring your hands either to the backs of your thighs or under your tailbone. See which feels more comfortable. Both are gonna make it a little, a little more comfortable for you. So once you have the inversion of your choice, eyes can close. And we're gonna take about seven to 10 breaths here. So maybe focusing on counting those breaths. The eyes can start to soften, the breath can start to deepen. And just allow the body to stay in this 
upside down shape for a few more breaths. We're going to slowly start to draw the knees back towards the body. You can bring your arms around your shins. Give yourself a little hug, maybe a little side to side rock or circling the knees. And then let's lift the forehead up off the mat, almost like you're trying to bring your forehead to your knees. Slowly placing that forehead back down on the mat as you make our way into a twist extending your arms to either side of you, letting the knees release over to the right side. You can either be looking up towards the ceiling or you can start looking to the left. So turning your head in the opposite direction of your knees. Sometimes I like to bend my elbows here, kind of like those cactus arms. You can play around with that, see how that feels. Sometimes it feels good to cross one leg over the other. It gives you kind of a deeper stretch into those hips. That's an option. Or just kind of letting yourself land wherever it feels comfortable. That's an option as well. And then slowly starting to draw the knees back through center as you take it over to the left side. So the knees are coming to the left. You're looking up towards the ceiling or turning your head to the right. And then on the next inhale, slowly drawing the knees back through center one more time. Let's bring the soles of the feet together. Let the knees release out to the sides on the mat. So your feet are on the ground. Your hands can be resting on your inner thighs or your stomach. And just start to soften through the back of the body here. So letting the shoulders kind of relax into the mat. Letting the hips relax. Feel the back of the head supported by the earth. You just start to let go. Start to allow your breath to return to its normal rhythm without paying attention to it, just letting it flow freely through the body. And then take a final moment here to kind of scan the body, check in with yourself and see how you're feeling now compared to when you first came to your mat. Notice maybe you're feeling a little lighter, a little a little more peaceful, a little slower, a little calmer, hopefully. <laughs> but if you're not, that's okay too. Because even if we don't physically notice the benefits of the class, your body recognizes it. So if you notice that there's any other movements that you still need, maybe you realize your shoulders are tight or you need a little twist or something, go ahead and take those final movements now as you start to journey into your last pose of the evening into your Shavasana. And that can be right where you were. If you liked that position with the soles of the feet together and you're done moving, then stay right there. But if there's another shape that's gonna feel comfortable for you, you can start to make your way into that shape now. As you begin to prepare for your Shavasana, maybe you grab some socks or a sweater or a pillow or blanket or anything that's gonna allow you to feel really comfortable for this last part of your practice. And then once you're ready, go ahead and just completely let go, completely melt into your mat, allowing yourself to surrender and be fully supported by the earth beneath you. As you float here in Shavasana.
slowly beginning to deepen your breath. Gently just starting to bring your awareness back to your body. As you start with your fingers and your toes, really gently moving your wrists and your ankles. And then stretching in a way that feels good, maybe bending the knees or straightening the knees, reaching the arms overhead. If it feels comfortable, you can turn over onto one side, coming into a fetal position with your head rested on your arm and your knees bent. Taking these last few moments here on your mat to just say thank you to yourself for again making the commitment to come to your mat and do something that's so good for you. When you're ready to begin making your way back to a seated position, you can slowly press your hands into the mat, beginning to lift the upper body up. The eyes can stay closed, or maybe you close them again once you are seated, bringing your hands to heart center. I hope you all have the most beautiful week great weekend ahead until I see you all again in two weeks. Namaste.